Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. I'm hoping this one will be quite a relaxing, peaceful video. Uh, so enjoy because we are exploring the lovely Cotswolds today and we have some really interesting places uh, that we're going to see. We've got some gorgeous gardens, stunning houses, amazing views overlooking the rolling hills of the Cotswolds. And because it's an Alex Travels video, obviously we need to have something unusual. So right now we are in the gardens of Snows Hill Manor, which is home to a very interesting collection. And that's all I'm gonna say for now, so I don't spoil it anymore. Uh, so let's explore these gardens first, and then we're gonna head into the manor and uh, see what this collection is all about. This garden is pretty much something just like out of a fairy tale or something like that. Um, when Charles Wade bought the house, this was uh, essentially just muddy farmland, nothing really here, and he had the idea to turn it into this, which is an arts and crafts garden, which was quite a big movement at the time, and it was a response to uh, Victorian industrialization. And it's all about simplicity, craftsmanship, really interesting place to a very serene place to be. Like my drawing. Well, let's have a look. Let's judge your drawing. Eh? Let's judge my drawing. <laughs> that was my uh, five minute sketch. It's not my best work of art, but it will do for now. I'm in the silent space. Shh. It's silent. Right, I've been instructed by Alex, I need to say that is no hill manor. Don't know why, but I have to say it. So, there you go. So let's go and see the collection. I don't know what I'm doing. I, I don't do videos. It's a one-off, I've done a special. That's it. <laughs> why you keep filming me? I gotta go now. <laughs> So it's said that Charles Wade got into collecting from his grandma who owned uh, many interesting artifacts that she used to keep in an 18th century cabinet. And in fact, that is the exact cabinet that you can see here. So Charles went on to become an architect, which explains why every single item in this collection is so special. He chose items based on their design, color, and craftsmanship, so everything is handcrafted. Charles went on to be an engineer in the First World War, and during this time he saw an advert for this very manor in Country Life magazine, which is when he purchased and renovated it. I think it takes a long time to read all of this. <laughs> yeah. My head is smaller than this book. Well, that was just sort of rudimentary uh, sheet music. Yeah, it is. But look at that. I think that's half of my body. <laughs> He even created his own family motto, let nothing perish, which is very fitting considering he amassed this huge collection throughout his life. Every single room you enter contains something different and always something you'd never expect to see. Like when we walked into the loft and saw this room full of old bikes, which is a very interesting and unique place to keep bikes, or this devil fish in a jar, which was one of my highlights just because of how weird it was. Definitely the most surreal room is this one, which is full of Japanese samurai armor. This armor dates back to around 1830 and was made in the Japanese province of Kaga. This armor was made during a time of peace, so it wouldn't have been made to be practical, but was purely made to be decorative. Charles Wade purchased this armor in Norfolk, which is just amazing. I have absolutely no clue how it would have ended up in Norfolk, and the story behind this armor must be amazing. What you got, Ellie? So, bugs, bugs, bugs painting, I don't know. And so that sums up our exploration of the house. Uh, we've been here twice now, and every single time we have seen something different that we missed the first time. There's just so many things to look at. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good place. I'm a big fan of uh, this, the instrument room here. Uh, very interesting. And uh, the creepy mask room, as Ellie's named it. Yes, that's my name for it. <laughs> Okay, so let's move on from Snows Hill Manor now to our next stop of the video, and this is a really great viewpoint of some of the amazing Cotswold countryside. Ah, you learned the gate. Well, it's not as bad here, so I'm just checking there's nothing on the <laughs> Well, 
I mean, I can see the windmill. Yeah, just just, yeah. <laughs> it's got to navigate our way to it, eh? Let's go. And so here we are now. It is not the same day because uh, we ran out of time. We actually visited Snow Hill Manor, I don't know, maybe a month ago. Yep. Something like that. <laughs> a while ago. Yeah, we've done many other things, but we didn't have a chance to come back to the Cotswolds until now. So here we are. Uh, it's a great day though. Very sunny, I can't see anything. It was raining when we left, and now it's got really sunny yeah. and warm, so yeah. I'm a bit too hot. <laughs> yeah, you look it. Yeah, also I'm wearing really good attire yeah. Yeah. Yep. for walking in a field, yeah. because Alex didn't tell me we're going to walk in a field. Well, the view should be good from the top because we're not even there yet. We've yeah. already got some good stuff. Yeah. We've made it to the windmill. Yeah, here it is. So here we are now at the windmill. We made it up the hill. Uh, so this hill is 180 meters high and therefore we get some incredible views over the surrounding Cotswold scenery. So this windmill was built in the early 18th century and it's a 12-sided barrel-shaped stone tower. And inside this windmill, all of the machinery still remains. So this mill operated until 1915 when it was struck by lightning, which is interesting, I guess windmills, quite a lot, do get struck by lightning because the one we saw in uh, Norfolk as well, Horsey Wind Pump, again, was struck by lightning and that is why it's not working today and that is the same story with this windmill. These sails, however, have been replaced in 1935. There was also a post mill built nearby in 1752, but it was destroyed in a storm in 1923 and no evidence of that mill can be seen today. Okay, yeah, so let's now head on to our final location of the video, which is very close to here around the 10 minute drive away, uh, and that is Upton House and Gardens. So let's go. So here we are now in our final location of the video. And this that you can see behind me are the gardens of Upton House. So we're still in the north side of the Cotswolds here, but we're a little bit more over to the east than we were in Snow Hill Manor, but we are very close to the windmill that we just visited. So yeah, let's uh, first of all have a little explore of these gardens. It's very white. I see the pumpkin. Pretty big. It's not very Halloween-y though. Do you reckon they paint it for Halloween? <laughs> yeah, yeah, if they don't grow orange, they just Yeah, paint if they don't orange. grow orange, they're like, not good enough. So yes, from here we can have a pretty epic view over the gardens here at Upton House, which are incredible. And there is Upton House itself just behind me, as well as Ellie. Hello. I'm holding the house. <laughs> the hat job. Another very interesting thing that you can see here are the insanely massive cedar trees over there. Why did he even bother having a pool? <laughs> I don't think he was warm enough, ever. How do you know? Well, it's not warm now, so... <laughs> True. That's my scientific. It's not very good to swim in now. No, definitely not. I wouldn't go. <laughs> yeah, it's got a diving board and everything though. Yeah. Well, you mean a diving plank? <laughs> and so here we are now. There is the house behind me. We are leaving and that summarizes the video. So I really hope you enjoyed uh, watching it. If you did and you want to see even more from the Cotswolds, feel free to check out my other Cotswolds video. And so yes. <laughs> Please subscribe if you did enjoy the video and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Like and subscribe. <laughs>